Oh, we are bringing you another episode in our Off the Carousel series, where we will be joined by each and every new head coach to the Division I ranks. There are almost 60 of them. We're going to be rolling these out a couple of days throughout the month of May and the month of June. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And if you like this interview, don't be afraid to tap that like button. That stuff really does help our channel and help our presence on YouTube. It helps more people like you find this content. And since I have you guys here, make sure that you check out our Instagram and TikTok pages. We are going to be pumping out more unique content over there throughout the summer heading into next season. Like, for example, did you know that Penny Hardaway was shot when he was a player in college? I bet you didn't know that. There are more stories like that on those pages. The links are in the description below. So now, without further ado, let's get into another edition of Off the Carousel. Jeff Goodman from the Field of 68 here with new Villanova head coach Kyle Neptune on the latest edition of Off the Carousel. And first of all, congrats. I did not think I would be sitting here doing this uh, with you this year. I thought you'd be going into year two at Fordham, trying to keep that thing going and take the next step. And here we are. You're the you're, you're Jay Wright's replacement. Has it hit you? Uh, you know, I don't think it still has. I mean, maybe, I guess, you know, honestly, I think when we start games, I think that's when it'll kind of be real. But uh, to be honest, I'm just as surprised as everybody else. So um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. All right. So I I've got to know, April 20th, this, <laughs> this thing starts to kind of percolate a little bit. I'm actually at a Celtics playoff game yeah. uh, for the whole day. And you're hearing the rumblings and whatnot. And, and then it breaks that night. I want to know, how long did you keep this secret, Kyle? So I don't know if I, I was actually keeping a secret because, you know, with Coach, um, you know, he said so many times in the past that he was done. You know, sometimes out of a fit of rage, but still, he, he said it so many times. And I was with him for eight years as assistant. If I, like, you know, no exaggeration, almost every year he said, ah, this might be the year, you know? Uh, so... Yeah, I, I, I had talked with uh, Mark Jackson, um, our athletic director here throughout the year, just because, you know, I look at him as a mentor and a friend. Um, and he said little things here and there, but I, I really never gave it any thought um, and, until, you know, maybe a couple days before um, when when Mark asked me to come in. And that w w once he asked to come in, I was like, OK, this is really? this, this could actually happen. Yeah. So. Uh, it was it was as quick, honestly, as quick of a turnaround for me as it was for everybody else. And you, maybe you, I, I had maybe a couple of days. Yeah. Of, so you had a couple uh, of days where you couldn't really tell yeah. much of anybody other than probably your family and maybe your, your staff at Fordham or not even. No, I, I really uh, I was asked to keep it as close to the chest as possible. So not, not easy to do, I bet. No, no, not at all. All right. So give me. The, the one piece of advice that Jay gave you on, on his way out, and he'll give you more, I'm sure, as you, as you need it. That'll be the great thing with Jay Wright. Some guys will want to hover. Jay Wright won't be a guy that will want to hover. Hover. But hover. I've been begging to, to see him. Like I, there's, there's definitely he's on the no beach. Hover. Kyle, he's on the beach. I don't know where he is. You, your, your guess is as good as mine right now. I'm, I'm trying to get him on the phone. If you, could, you probably can get him on the phone better than I can. Hey, he's still great at returning texts. I'll give yeah. I'll yeah. give Jay credit. As good as probably any elite Hall of Fame head coach at returning texts. Yes. Um, but he is a guy that you know, if you need, you're gonna be able to call and, and bounce things off him. But what what's was there any sort of piece of advice he gave you on his way out? You know, I, I don't know if I could just point to one thing. I mean, obviously, I you know, I, I think I would I mean coach at 24 years old. 24 years old. So I, I've been with him for a long, long time. You know, 10 of the last 14 years I spent on his staff. And even the years I was gone, I still uh, stayed in contact. So, um, you know, I, I think I had a pretty good understanding of, uh, you know, what he's built here. Um, you know, and, you know, he's not leaving. That's, that's the other piece that, you know, people, um, you know, I don't know if people really understand. He's just moving to a different role. Um, he, he's still going to be around the program. Um, I personally want him around as much as possible. Um, so he, he'll be around. He'll be around. Um, what did you learn last year at Fordham? 
in that one year, how much do you think it helped you now? Because, you know, if you had done a, a Hubert Davis or a John Shire and moved over a seat, yeah. obviously um, it's going to be hard anyway for you going from Fordham to Villanova and replacing a legend like Jay. But at least now they always talk about how you've called timeouts. Yeah. You've called plays. You've, you've run your own program for a year. How much is that going to help you? You know, I think uh, it helps. I think that I no way I would have been ready for this uh, spot unless I went and did that. Um, that's the first thing I want to say. Uh, but I think that what it what it really showed me more than anything is how um, good all the people here are at Villanova. Um, you know, from our staff um, to the people around campus, um, and how invested the people are here in, in making sure that Villanova basketball is successful. Um, so I, I think it gave me a, a sense of appreciation uh, more than anything. So most guys on Jay's staff over the years are homegrown Villanova yeah. guys. Yeah. I've always wanted to ask you this, and I never have. How did you get on? I mean, you were you didn't play for him, and then you were an assistant Niagara for a few years, and then he hired you, I think, maybe a video or ops first? So I started out of college. I went and tried. I should say tried. Some people say played overseas. I tried to play overseas for a year, yeah. uh, bounce around a couple spots. didn't really stick. Um, and then, you know, I, I, um, I came up in the AU world in New York. Um, I had a lot of, you know, pretty, pretty big connections. And just through those connections, a couple of people knew uh, some guys on the staff at Villanova, a new coach. And kind of got in my foot in the door uh, as the video coordinator through those connections, uh, and that that was my first year. That was 2008. Um, you know, and the first year I was here, we went to the Final Four, ended up leaving the year after, uh, spent three years away, and then that that's that's when Coach brought me back, just because of the relationship. Um, yeah, and and we had, it was a kind of funky turnover because uh, Billy Lang left to go be with the Sixers, I want to say in August. So, you know, we, it was a, it was really late. And, you know, coach definitely likes to, um, uh, he, he has a, 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 he likes to have people on his staff that he knows and trusts. Um, I think I was just the best option at the time. So, um, you know, I was definitely fortunate that he, he brought me back and that was what, 2013. Yeah. 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 And obviously you've been a part of, you know, the run, the run of Villanova, where people talk about the culture more than anything else. It's about that culture uh, at Villanova, winning a couple titles, just getting the, the right guys in. I, I thought you guys as a staff did an incredible job of that, not necessarily going after the rankings, which Jay will admit he did prior a little bit, um, but going after guys that, that fit, that wanted to be there, that wanted to play the right way that you didn't have to worry about, right? Your phone ringing at 2.30 in the morning. None of that. I mean, it, so the culture is set. How much, Kyle, do you, do you really have to change with this? Or is it just like, hey, let's just try to keep this thing moving? Yeah, I, I really don't need to change much. And people always ask me, even last year when I was at Fordham, I, oh, how are you different than coach? What are you going to do differently with your program? And for me, you know, again, we, we just mentioned how much time I've spent here. I grew up in this program. I really don't know much else. Yeah. Um, so I, obviously I'm a different person. I have a different personality. Um, but, you know, I, I think my mind was, basketball mind was formed here and the way I think about the game and uh, the culture I really believe in. So, uh, like you said, it's much more of, you know, just making sure that we uh, stay committed to what we do here um, and teach the new guys um, that are coming in, you know, what it, how exactly we do things. Can, can you please uh, try to make it so they're not such robots? Uh, <laughs> what, and what they take that? pride in it. What does that mean? What does that mean? No, they're, they, they like it. I've actually said it to, to Brunson. To, to Colin, to Jermaine, all those guys. And they laugh. And I actually talked to Brunson about it um, in the middle of this season. And he said, he goes, yeah, we're kind of taught to be that way. We've got personalities, but we don't really show them when we're at Villanova on the podium or on the court. But I don't know if you saw the interview he did uh, after, I forget what game it was of the playoffs, when he got up there with, with Chuck and Kenny and Shaq. And he was hilarious. He's ripping on his father. So, like, I do know Villanova players have personalities, so we want to see them a little bit more now. 
I think you've seen them over the years. <laughs> I don't bit. know what you're talking about though, yes. with that one. I think, no, I, I think they've done a great job. They, they're awesome. They are. They're, once you get to know them, I think they open up a little bit. But they do take pride in being called robots because of how they play the game and how, how meticulous they play the game and, and how, again, you don't see ever, I feel like ever, them complain to, a, to an official or anything like that. I, I, it's a compliment. And, and, and they do take it that way once you explain it to them. At first, I don't know if they take it that way of being called robots, but um, no, I mean, what, what will you change? Is there something you've thought about that you actually may change or is everything going to stay exactly the same? So I think, you know, with any team, even, you know, when, when coaches here, I think you go in and evaluate your team over the summer and try to figure out the strengths and weaknesses and play to your strengths and try to mask and hide and, and you know, make your weaknesses your strengths. So I think that's kind of going to be more what we're doing this summer is just figuring out what we're good at, you know, what we need to improve on and try to figure out a way to play that you need to this team. I think every team is different. Even if you look at coaches' teams throughout the years, his 2018 uh, – what was it, 2016 that was very successful uh, uh, was completely different than his 2019 uh, that went to the Final Four, which was different than the 16 team that won a national championship and different from the 18 team. And then all those teams are completely different than this past year's team that went to the Final Four. So um, I think Villanova basketball, there is a uh, – a certain infrastructure there, a certain uh, certain things that are important, but you know each team is always kind of going to be different. So, what what about something different that you'll change? Like you know, Jay did for like training table. There had to be something that that you're just like, all right, I'm not doing that. Now that I'm in charge of the program, there's no way I'm doing that. Um, you know, my mom, my mom and, uh, is, is from the Caribbean and she has a lot of great sayings. Um, and one of her great sayings is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if I have something like, oh, you know what, this didn't work. Okay. Right. Yeah. I think, I think what, what we've been a part of here for the last couple of years, um, has been extremely successful. So, but I mean, I'm not, I think the world changes and you have to change with it, but there's not something that I'm like, oh, we, we got to get rid of that. Like not, nothing like that. All right. So speaking of that, the world changing, the world in college basketball yeah. has changed significantly. We know that, yeah. right? Yeah. I think it's part of the reason. I don't know how much he admitted that, but I think it is part of the reason Jay left when he did, because he saw all the changes and the portal and the NIL. And he was like, you know what? Now's the time. It, it, it's a young man's game. You know, Jay looks younger, but he's still 60. So I don't know if he wanted to deal with all that. But, you know, for you, the one thing for Villanova, they really didn't hit the portal at all as a program. I mean, Caleb Daniels was the only transfer on the team, um, you know, went to the Final Four last year. How much will that change under your leadership? Well, I mean, we don't – it's not like we say, oh, we're never going to get take a transfer or we're never going to – take a, we, we don't, we don't say those type of things. Um, you know, we just look for the right guys. So wherever those guys are, uh, whether it's in Philadelphia or you expand and go elsewhere or the transfer portal, wherever they're coming from, it's more about the guy um, and their family and the people around them than where, where they're actually coming from. All right. So you inherit a team that a lot of people are going to look at and, and be like, wow, I don't know how good they're going to be. They lose Gillespie and Samuels. You know, two two guys who've been around forever, won a ton of games, all about the right things. But you bring a lot back. I mean, Justin Moore hopefully will come back and be 100%. I don't know what the timetable is for him and, and obviously his injury. But Brandon Slater, who I, I love. I love Brandon. Like, I might be the card-carrying president of the Brandon <laughs> Slater fan club. Me too. I, Me too. I, I just love everything he stands for yeah. and, and how he plays – how he's all about team and doesn't care about scoring. I think he can do more scoring. I, I really do. And he showed that at the beginning of last year when he was healthy. Um, Dixon, you've got a lot back. You've got a it, – it's a sneaky team coming back that I think people look at and they're like, all right, how good are they going to be? Uh, and I ask you, how, how good do you think you're going to be? No, we're, we're going to try to be as good as we possibly can. Uh, I, I love this team. I think we have a lot of talent. Uh, you mentioned a lot of them, Caleb Daniels. Uh, experience, really experienced guy has been a part of now final 14. 
Um, Brandon Slater has been a, a, a part of a lot of good teams. Like you mentioned, he's very talented. Um, I agree with you. I think he could do a lot more this year where I think we're going to rely on him a lot more. And, you know, Eric Dixon, I think, came into his own at the end of the year. I think he's gotten a lot better. Jordan Longino um, is another guy that, you know, I think we're going to rely on a lot. Um, you know, I, I like all our guys. I like all our guys. I feel like we, we have a chance to do some special things. I think our freshmen are really good. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll we'll kind of evaluate these guys throughout the summer. Um, our goal is always to be the best team we can be at the end of the year, um, you know, and, and, you know, do things a specific way, do things, um, you know, all do the things the same way. So, you know, we, we never really talk about winning. Uh, I know it's the, obviously, you know, it's the most important yeah. thing, but our, our, our thought process is always going to be how good can we get by the end of the season. So I, I was talking to Jay last year about uh, your young point guard that you inherited the freshman Brizzy. Is that his name? Yeah. Brizzy? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, he, we were talking about Gillespie and, and he was saying how much uh, Colin used to get his butt kicked by Brunson as a freshman, like yeah. crucified. And, yeah. And, and Jalen told know if me Colin the would admit that. I don't, I don't, I don't know if Colin Gillespie would admit that he got crucified. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to stand up for Colin a little bit. All right. All right. Jalen, Jalen confirmed it. Okay, he's holding his own a little bit. Yeah, Jalen confirmed it, but I don't know how much. Did, we can... did Jalen confirm that? He oh. did, but but that's Jalen. We don't know. Like we need the other side of the story, which right. is Colin's side, or or you're somebody to stand up for Colin here, because Jay and and Jalen were, were were killing him in that matchup as a freshman. So he was basically saying, like, I didn't think he he didn't really think he was Colin was any good that freshman year because he got his butt kicked so much, and he he kind of pulled that forward to 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 this kid. And he said, I think he's going to be really good. Now, he got his butt kicked this year a lot by Colin, but I think this kid's got a chance to be really good. Describe him. I haven't really seen much of him. Uh, what's he like, and is he going to be the front runner to be the guy to replace Colin and be the point guard? Um, I think it's way, way, way too soon to say front runners for any specific spots or anything like that. But, you know, from, from what I've seen, again, I haven't been with our team yet on the floor because um, it's just the timing on when I came. Um, but just just from what I've seen in the uh, in when we were recruiting him, um, he's extremely talented, can really shoot it, way more athletic um, than you think. And I think he's a gamer. I think he's someone who enjoys to compete. So, uh, again, I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning some of our new guys' game and the guys that, you know, there's one class that I wasn't around. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, kind of getting to know their games a little bit. All right, so in the, the hierarchy of athletic Villanova point guards, uh, where does he – so he ranks ahead of Gillespie, Brunson, and Arch. Clearly, athletically? We um, got him number one out of those four? I mean, I, if I had to choose the best athlete – I mean, I, I would I would say Dante DiVincenzo. I mean, I, for, for us, just athleticism-wise at that guard spot, I'd say he would be number one. That's what I would All go right. with. Um, just all other guys that I was here with, you know, obviously there's guys from the past, but, um, you know, I, I think he's right there with those guys in terms of his athleticism. All right. Last question for you, Kyle. What do people not know about Kyle Neptune? Because I think a lot of people are going to find out about you, but you're kind of a quiet dude. You kind of, you know, not a self promoter, never have been just kind of do your job, put your head down. You and I, you know, I've gotten a chance to know each other over the years, but what, what do people not know about Kyle Neptune? Uh, you know, I think I'm, for, for people that know me, I think they know that I'm pretty outgoing, actually. Um, you know, like to have fun. Um, you know, like to be around our guys. You know, like to crack jokes. Um, you know, so, you know, we'll, we'll I, me and you, I, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and I think other people will as well. Well, listen, congrats. Your world changed on April 20th, my man. It, it, it definitely changed. And uh, again, great, uh, great job to have, you know, not an easy one, but I'm sure one that you would sign up for in an absolute heartbeat any day of the week. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, there it is. New Villanova head coach, Kyle Neptune, joining us here. Field of 68 off the carousel.